Hello and welcome back to Rust 101. Uh, my name's Andy, this is video 8 and we're talking today about impl blocks or how to put methods on uh, types that you have defined. So um, in the previous uh, video and other, possibly other places we used methods on uh, objects. We didn't really explain what methods are. So here's an example. Um, we say x dot unwrap and unwrap is a method and if you're familiar with uh, other programming languages you'll have seen this kind of syntax before. Basically you do the, the name of the variable dot and then the method name and then bracket bracket or possibly um, a pair of brackets with arguments in, in between. So it's like calling a function, but it's calling a function on this thing. Um, and the meaning of that we'll get to in a second, but it is similar to uh, methods in other languages, the meaning of it. Um, and in Rust, you can define methods on your types, um, your struct types, and also your enum types. Um, so here is an example of an enum type and we're going to define a method on it. So this enum type is called IP address. So an enum type, you'll remember, is something that could be either one thing or another. So this thing is either an IPv4 or an IPv6, because it's an IP address. Um, and so you define the data that fits inside a thing in this enum block, which means it's either IP4 or IP6. Um, but then if you're defining methods, you can put it inside an impl block, which is a separate block. So you end the enum block, start this new block, and you say, I'm implementing IP address, which means I'm providing methods uh, and associated functions, which we'll talk about later, uh, on this thing called IP address. So this means that you'll be able to call the methods you define in here, like this one as U32, you'll be able to call on instances of it. So here we made an instance of an IP address, and we call this method as U32 on it. So how does it work? Well, um, you have... Uh, if it's a method, if you're going to be able to call it like this, uh, it's going to have uh, its first parameter is going to be called self, and in this case, it's got this ampersand to mean a reference to self. Uh, and then, other than that, it looks similar to a normal function; it has a return value and stuff. And then you can use self in here the same way you would use some other thing. You don't have to put the type for the self parameter; it knows that it's an IP address, um, and that means you can match it like, because it's, because an IP address is an enum. Um, you can match it and find what type it is, which you, you'll probably need to do if you're writing a method on uh, an enum. So here we've matched it on an IP4. If it's an IP4, we do this bit of maths, otherwise we return none. Um, is that right? Yeah, I guess the yeah this calculation here of whatever this is. Oh, it's like shifting bits and things. Oh yeah, of course, because it's as U32. Um, it, it returns an option because it might not work out for some reason, but I guess this shifting doesn't work. Um, I'm not sure what this underscore is here. I think that's a typo. So I think it should just be an underscore to none. Um, so basically, the uh, general idea of this... Um, this code is that you can write methods on things, e even enums. In a minute we'll look at writing methods on structs, but here's an example of doing it on enums. Um, the other thing to bear in mind is that this impl block being separate like this um, is kind of deliberate because you can put, you can write multiple impl blocks for um, a type. So um, it, it, that might not seem useful here. Um, it is useful in some cases, for example, you might want some methods inside one file and some inside another, which you might think is a really bad idea, but sometimes if you've got a lot of methods, you might want to split them up that way. But also, we're going to eventually see impl blocks that aren't just on a simple thing like IP address, but some different generic uh, types. So there's going to be some methods that are only defined for if your generic parameters fit certain constraints and things like that. So there are uh, interesting reasons why you can have multiple impl blocks. You might not like the idea when you first hear it, but... Um, it works out okay, I think. Uh, yeah, so we've done all this. Yeah, so just to re repeat again, yeah, once we've defined this method as U32, we can call it uh, as a method on on an instance of that thing. So um, let's talk a bit more about self. And notice that there are two selves here that are, that are really quite different. Lowercase s self and uppercase s self. So... Um, uh, as I said, methods take self as an argument. So, for example, this consume method here uh, takes an argument self, and you don't have to provide this, the type. 
Uh, by the way, there are some complicated cases where you will provide a type because you don't want just the simple stuff, but for the simple stuff, you don't provide it. Now, this method is interesting. It's called consume for a reason. This method takes self by value. So what that means is that inside the method, you can use self, but once you've finished calling that method, um, it's been consumed. Uh, so the thing you called it on is has been moved into the method, which is a bit confusing at first. But basically, if you call consume... Um, you can no longer use the thing you called it on after that. It's been moved in. And interestingly, in here, it's been used to create a new instance of the same thing, a new instance of foo. And the way that's working is with this capital S self is, is just a type, which is just a shorthand for uh, foo in this case. Um, so capital S self is just a way of saying the, um, the thing that I'm inside. And it's kind of, it's a combination of things. It's useful for just abbreviating you don't have to bother typing out the whole type which might be quite complicated but also it's used even in a simple case like this just to make it clearer that this in some sense is a, a like a construction function or construction method um, you're returning an instance of self so that's kind of a bit special so rather than making it look like all the other methods we use that capital s self to make it clear um, that we're co like constructing a new instance of of our of ourself um, so yeah this this what this function does is kind of deletes the old self that you pass in and then creates a new one a new foo which is like one bigger right uh, and then returns it so it's kind of a constructor and a method and it's a method that kind of deletes the old one all at the same time um, so here's some more normal methods so this one is called borrow this one takes a reference to self a non a not mutable reference uh, non-exclusive reference, and it returns a reference to an i32, and that's because foo, the foo itself, you see, is just an i32 wrapped up inside this struct, so we can get it out with this dot zero. That's what we were doing up here as well, by the way. So we get that i32 out, and then we return a reference to it, which is why we're returning a reference to an i32. And as we talked about the reference rules before, um, it will have the same lifetime as self, which makes sense. Uh, then there's also this uh, borrow mute method, which does exactly the same thing, except this takes a mutable reference to self. So in order to call this method, you'll need a mutable um, object in the first place, and it returns a mutable reference to an i32, and it does that by just taking a mutable reference to the thing inside the foo, this i32 in here. So that's... Um, uh, that's like those are methods that take self either self with no ampersand which means I consume the thing or a reference like these two mutable or not um, but they're also inside an input block you'll also see stuff like this this is called new this is not a method this is an associated function that's the wording which is like a static constructor um, or so well an associated function is like a static method in other languages it's it's a thing that can be called on the type not on an instance of the type and you'll notice it doesn't take a self argument but it returns something of type capital s self so it returns a foo so it's basically a constructor and inside is the kind of built-in construction uh, syntax that you get for free in rust so if you make a foo brackets i32 you can always construct one by saying foo brackets zero um, uh, although where you can say that is normally quite constrained, so you can say it in the in here, uh, inside the Im implementation of foo, possibly because it's in the same file. I'm not sure exact rules, um, but uh, yeah. So we're using that built-in Rust constructor to construct an instance of self and return it. And this method presumably is going to be usable by people who don't have access to that built-in Rust uh, construction. Um, they can just call foo colon colon new bracket bracket and they'll get a new instance especially if this was pub then that would make sense right that you could you could call it from elsewhere um yeah so a key point here is that um little s self is the name it, like that has to be the name if you want it a thing to be a method and you'll either consume it or take a reference um, but also you can have associated functions and some of these methods will use capital s self as a shorthand for the type of the thing that you're in. So that's how to make methods. Um, we call the self parameter the receiver. It has to be the first argument. Uh, it has to be called self. It will automatically have the type. Um, we almost never specify the type of it uh, because it is just the type of the thing. Um, but there are cases where, like with pin and stuff like that, where we might 
um, specify like colon blah like in the same way we would work for other arguments um, as I said you can use ampersand or ampersand mute to make it take a reference and if you don't have self then that means we uh, uh, it's an associated function instead of a method so here's an example that uses all that stuff so we make a foo by calling foo colon colon new as I said so we don't make new is not a method on an instance of foo it's a way of making an instance of foo so now f is a foo so now we can call that borrow method that we saw and just print out the answer so it will print out zero I'm assuming because new created an instance of foo with a zero inside it uh, then we can borrow it mutably so here we're calling the borrow mute method uh, and then we can dereference that thing that we got back which was a, a mutable reference from i32 and then we can assign to it so we're changing the stuff inside this f the i32 that is stored inside this f to 10 then we're not before we do anything else with it so now f has got this 10 inside it then we're calling the consume method so consume you'll remember is the method that takes uh, takes ownership like moves f or moves the thing the value of f into the inside of the function so we were not allowed to be after line five we are not allowed to use f anymore because it's been consumed it got it got moved into this consume method um, so now we have a g because it because that consume method returns an instance of foo because it had that capital s self return value now g is an instance of foo and f is not usable anymore but we can um, call the borrow method on g print out the answer so that's going to print out 10. Um, okay, so that was a short intermission into like how you define methods on uh, structs and enums. Um, and we'll get back to some of the most common types that you use in Rust in the next video. See you then.